Hello there and welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Murders have occurred, plural this time, Taka and Hafumi. Although my current suspicion is that Hafumi is faking death and he is the one who killed Taka and then frames Yasuhiro with it with false last words and other things. Either way, we gotta find all the clues to figure out the true solution because I was fooled last time, so I can't trust my own judgment. Obviously the hammers that murdered them came from here. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall. Although some are more like mallets. Mallets! Could the justice hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? Spotless hammer has been added to the truth section. It's a truth bullet! He'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? There's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way, there wouldn't be any blood left behind while the body was moved. Blue tarp is a truth bullet. However, you didn't leave thing ever. Hafumi's big, cold body is lying on the floor. His really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? From the nurse's office where he was discovered to here to the repository, all the way from the first floor to the third, and all without anyone noticing it. How the hell? It's no good. I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now, I have to finish investigating Hafumi himself. If I remember correctly, Hafumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Wait! Something's off about this body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hafumi's body in the nurse's office versus the body right now. That's it! His glasses! When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now they're completely clean! Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that, and why? He did it! Man, Hafumi, you dick! You just had- it's a good plan? But you're really gonna pretend to be dead? Really? Whatever. I call BS. Hmm. There are too many suspects in the incident this time. There are many aspects of the incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then... Would you like my help? Yeah! Let's look back on things. If this is just a lot, huge recap, I'll just, um, cut it. Mm. One morning, only four of us met up in the dining room. This morning, only four of us met in the dining room. Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up. So we decided to go look for them. Mm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began a search, and soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Mm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came to get you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after 7 o'clock. Mm. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo-Justice. It also came clear that this Robo-Justice had dragged Fumi away! Huh. After meeting up with Toko and Byakuya, we began searching for the costume assailant. We found an injured Hifumi on the library in the third floor. We took him to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search, but not long after leaving the nurse's office. What's wrong? I saw a shadow. Something's moving from the top, around the top floor of the stairs. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back to the second floor, where we split up and began searching. Then... Right after that, hmm. Celeste screamed. This time had apparently this time she had apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste, what's wrong? That is a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Hmm. And then yeah! Huh? What was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... 
Don't fool me. He's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on. We have got to go back. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. So let's Hina and I went back to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, Yubiaki and Toko pursued the suspect up on the third floor. And when we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hafumi's corpse. Which it was so which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what had happened. However. But at the same time, we had discovered Takaka's body in the equipment room. Which means Hafumi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time. I have revised my hypothesis. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement play right around finding Taka. And then when I showed up, I told you that Byaki and Hifumi had been killed, right? And you, me, and Byaki all headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toko, who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab, we ran to Celeste, who had arrived to tell us something very unusual. Hifumi's body has disappeared! We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that his corpse was, in fact, gone! <laughs> then we remembered we had abandoned an unconscious Toko and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating or something? This time, Taka's body had disappeared. From there, we began our search for both of the missing bodies. And after some time, mm. Les told us she'd found the bodies and we all headed to the repository. And there, we rediscovered the two bodies that had apparently vanished. And that brings us up to now. However... Looking back, things have certainly been very active. If you want to look back at the case again, just let me know. I'm fine anytime. Well, that served no purpose. But whatever, at least it was quick. Anyway, my revised hypothesis is that Hafumi is really dead. Because, yeah. But he faked his first death. This, he basically, he is an accomplice for Celeste. Celeste convinced him to do stuff, probably in exchange for the alter ego. And he's the one who dragged the body here, but then Celeste finished the job on him with the clean hammer that was cleaned. And I don't know why he would say hero, but oof, something. Either way, the true mastermind here, I'm guessing, is Celeste. There's only one way in and out of this room. There's definitely a lock on the door. It can only be locked from inside the repository. I don't see any way to lock it from the art room. Yeah, which means Hafumi locked it before he was killed. So, um... I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. What is it? Hmm. After Hafumi's and Takada's bodies disappeared, we sp Takada's bodies disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck oh. together. And we came right to the repository to, you know, look around. But when we got there, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. I know, I tried too. Hmm. And we came over here as soon as we searched, as the search started. So there's no way someone could have beat us here. If that's true, then who locked it? And why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when we searched for the body as it began. But now it's wide open. There might be someone lur some secret lurking in there. Probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Okay, he and Sakura both confirmed that the door was locked after the search for the bodies began. The door is designed so that it can only be locked from the inside of the repository. In other words, when Hina checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. For that certain someone, Hina claims there's no way someone could have been beaten them to the repository. Was it the killer who's still roaming free, or was it one of the victims? It was Hafumi! What you got? Byakuya, do you think Hiro really did it? Hmm. I don't know how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearance all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Hafumi said when he died. Yeah, he said Hiro's name. So in other words... Then there's no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. 
Did you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? What's that? That's all that bothers you that about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? Hmm. They probably figured if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. If that's all there really is, is that all there really is to it? The other thing that bothers me. Why'd they bother killing two people? What? Because all the rule says is if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're a killer, if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get found out. I see. Hold on, perhaps. I see, so that's what that means. Is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Screw you. <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have found, might have some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured something out. But if he did, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? A little bit. I kind of hope so. Why can't he be the victim? It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around. Kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use it. But wait! Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found the Taka's body? For some reason, I accidentally clicked it then. Was that a, was that like an on purpose bug? Whatever. And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? Gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are place, some place I already know about. First, the nurse's office, then the equipment room. Well, I guess I'm done here. All right, to the close one. To the equipment room. Behind the giant humidifier of doom. That just makes so much sound. Hello, genocide. Justice Hammer 4, the weapon used to kill Taka. The body was removed, but the murder weapon is just left here. There's some kind of mark going through the pool, blood in the middle of the room. But it reminds me of the dolly. There was blood in its tire. Could the blood have come from? Here? Which means that the dolly was used to move the body. Both rooms on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. Truth bullets! But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Afumi? Fumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way to get it up from the third floor. That's still a total mystery. This tarp. I feel like I've seen it before, and just recently too. Yeah, the one that Taka was on. Nothing else, what do you have to say? I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. I'm super pissed I missed such a, I'm super pissed I missed such a, I missed such an ultimately rare event. And your words had no meaning. Oh, as you go down to the, to the nurse's office now, so let's warp there. Nope, nope, there we go. Nurse's office! Look at them hearts. Hello, Celeste. You're the killer. Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill the Fumi. Someone moved the body but left the weapon behind. What are you investigating, Celeste? <laughs> I'm not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I'm simply going around seeing if Hero might be hiding somewhere. Mm. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Fumi's body. Let's see. 
how Hafumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you're supposed to be in the nurse's office, right? Yes, indeed. Correct. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone. Hmm. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then the killer was able to get in and move Hufumi's body in that short amount of time? Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hufumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of anything less than impossible. Alright then. Anything else in here? The fridge. Looking inside, bunch of blood packets here for blood transfusions, I guess. Doesn't help me though, I'm not a vampire. Except that you can use them to fake death. It's just a normal trash can. There's something inside. Too small to be a handkerchief, it's a glasses cleaning cloth. It's got some kind of cartoon character on it, but it's covered in blood. Oh. Did you find something? Yeah, there's a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? Cleaning cloth? It's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe up some blood. But who would do something like that? <sighs> I have the slightest idea. Yeah, me either. But I think it might be important. Truth bullets! Well, guess I'm leaving here. Hmm. So this is where you were. I've been looking for you. You have? I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Huh? <laughs> you should get to Hero's Room. Oh, and give, and let me give you this. Meet in the dining hall. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? <laughs> you remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so, I, so it left an impression. It's all clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. What are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Just y Yasuhiro's message is a truth bullet. To Hero's Room! Where is his room? Where is it? You can never be sure which room is whose. There he is. The door is unlocked. I guess I can go inside. Yakia did say to go look. Might not be a great idea, but I'm gonna take the plunge. Whoa, he customized the hell out of it. There's all kind of weird stuff in here. Where'd he even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means I can't really- he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? I think there's something in the cardboard box. Blueprints for something and... Something made out of- it looks like cardboard, plastic, and plaster. Is this Robo-Justice? And it's in Hero's room! But wait. These blueprints. Something about them bothers me. Hmm. That's not how the arms bent. Oh, and that's not his writing. That's not his handwriting. Okay, anything else in here? The normal bed. Well, let us leave. Ah! Big news! What's wrong? We found Kyoko! What? She okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Just a second! Robo Justice showed up too! Hmm. It's Hero wearing a costume. Okay. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. I think Hero and Kyoko might turn up at the same time. Anyway, have to head to the pool! They're just standing there. 
Kyoko end. I mean... Phew, man, I have had the worst day. Hero? You gotta explain yourself, dude. Hero? Huh? Oh, hey, Makoto. Yeah, duh, who else would it be? That's a good question. Huh? Why do I look like this? Did someone come along and remodeled me while I was sleeping? Was it the Illuminati? Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool locker room. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be mean! I still can't believe you kicked me! You could have been a little more gentle about it, like, I don't know, caress my face or something. What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden, without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind. It's nothing. Never mind. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know how people think she might be spying for the mastermind? And? First of all, Hiro, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean... I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened, then I woke up, then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Huh? Uh... Let me out of here! I don't know what's with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? <laughs> Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? You got it all wrong! I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing! It would seem... There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. <laughs> he, Hifumi dra put you in the suit, and that wasn't the guy. That was him carrying you on his shoulders. For the picture. Okay. Hmm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits, Hero? I bet everyone's also figured out all this stuff, and I'm not special at all. So then... More to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Hold on a sec. Honestly. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. Is that okay? In other words, it's obvious to everyone that you made this costume. <laughs> That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be... It's obvious, the one that put this costume on and went around attacking everyone. That's terrible! Was Hero! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst. Good idea. I would want him killing anyone else. What? What? Tie me up? Hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, um... Attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? Can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. Please! What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine, if you're gonna be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a bit, started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Huh! See, look. See how loose it is. I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? I, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Oh. It also makes it pretty clear that he couldn't have moved the bodies while wearing them. Um... It's cause you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Go ahead, Makoto. Okay. 
against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. No good, the arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. Just a second! See, I told you it was impossible! <laughs> you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body exactly. But... Then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same, but, but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there's another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi doing this whole thing anyway. That's terrible! Which is how I knew we know it's him. What? what? Man, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Did someone, like, tell me? The Robo Justice costume is a bullet. I'll tell you, man, because I'm pretty heck? sure you're innocent. If you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed Taka and Hafumi. What? What? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Please! I did not. Huh? Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it. I know who did it. So then... You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Hafumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% right. Yeah, that's horrible. Which means Alter Ego or Chihiro must have done it. Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. Please! What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so then... I know that note. Note? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out. So I don't tell anyone else for now. It's me in the rec room at 1 a.m. <sighs> But the last thing I remember is going to the rec room, then for some reason I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So... No, hold on to something. Hold on, he could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? Really? <sighs> I told you, someone's trying to set me up. Secret passage, a chance to escape, someone wrote that all to trick me. Ah. <sighs> Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. <sighs> well, after being trapped here for so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check it out, right? Yeah! <laughs> they prayed to my desire to get out of here! They deceived me! <sighs> I still don't buy it. Don't be mean! Well, you should buy it! Just a second! Then show us the note. Hmm. I have it right here in my, um, pocket. <laughs> no way! Looks like I lost it. Ah. Sure. Please! <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh -huh. Yasuhiro's account has been added. <laughs> now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. What the heck? Why did you kill them? Tell us, Hero. Uh -huh. No, it's like I said. Just the worst. Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke, and that's why. Please. What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you. Hm. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? What? What? You're right, I need to look for the second suit, and that note! Feet don't fail me now! I guess I go better go back to guard duty. I'm gonna ask Toko, or just like Jack, to switch with me. Hmm. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Bye! One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto. Do you have a second? I want you to help me with the investigation. It would seem... It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, but can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. Anyway... Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we? See, I would say yes, hey. I do mind. Go pit, Go frickin' screw yourself. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. 
can't believe I'm hearing that from the girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easy than the living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway. We have to hurry before the class trial begins again. Yeah, you're right. And show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. Guess we should head that way. To the art room for art and blood. Mine, oh, I'm, in the, I'm on the second floor. Let us go here, where the bodies are. Totally. You're still pretty freaking rude. Uh, yeah, you're not f actually following me. Afumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko... Kyoko seems to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then... Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka, and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth, she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Must have been struck with Justice Hammer 4. There's a tarp under the body. All right. So what do you, what have you found? Yep. How to move the corpse and the glasses thing. So, what have you found? I see. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore in his left hand? You did? Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike the other people that much? Whoa, look who's talking. Yes, I am black, Mrs. Kettle. No, that's not it. So then. Anyway, hey, so you said he had a watch? Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? Most likely broke when he had his encounter with the assailant. And you notice the hands are frozen at just past six o'clock. That's right. That means the watch is broken sometime just after six. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey you, how long are you gonna keep us waiting? As he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls. In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. We have a time of death. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. Appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Makoto. Can you try to pry it out? Because... Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited for this kind of manual labor, right? Wow, that's grim. Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper! Hey! Was it all he had in his hand? That's it. A little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then... Let's check Ifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. Okay. Indeed. I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper. That's right. Ifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden. Indeed. He stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see. In his pants? Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Koto, open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like, it better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note! Found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out. So don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So? That sounds very familiar. 
The same thing Hiro said. And he was telling the truth. However... Although I'm not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... One a.m. The time is different. Hiro told us his notes had to meet at one a.m. But the note the note they wrote to Fumi asked him to meet at six a.m. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note, doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So... Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. Some meaning to being ripped? Um, can you explain it? Because I can't figure out that the broken piece of paper goes to the other paper with a piece broken off of. Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. So then... What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper he was holding? What if it was something more important? How would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Because I'm apparently an idiot, I can't put two and two together. Two and two hey. equals 47. Not seven, seven. Not even a real number. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims of this time definitely have their e-handbooks on this on them so the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out not that there's any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place but you're saying i don't have to think about the handbooks this time right is that right if you didn't have to think about them at all i wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it all i said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders they may come in there may come a point however where a handbook may play a role I don't think I understand. If Kyoko thinks it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. Oh, it's time for the trial! Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death, and so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. All of these clues were pretty easy to find this time around. I'm a little concerned because this one actually seems easier than the last case, which had the big twist of Biakia screwing with us. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we better get going. Okay. All right, then. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. As soon as we were all there... Monokuma appears! There's two Monokumas. He's multiplied! Wrong! Nope, not multiplication. It just looks that way because of an illusion. I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied. Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? Whew. Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, tough crowd. You're not playing along. Stop talking. We're not here to play with you. Okay. Hey! Hey! Then if everyone's here, go and ready to go. Please board the pain train. Or elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay, then shall we? <laughs> Please! I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? I told you already, I didn't do it. For serious. Hmm. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume or the note? <sighs> well, no, but... <laughs> How unfortunate, then it would seem we have our culprit. <laughs> hey. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Good idea. That's right. I have to. I have to do it. I can't let her ever kill Tafumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone is still alive, and for the two that lost their lives. Shh. 
The one who killed Hafumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone right here! It's you! I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly. I began to walk towards the elevator. Once everyone was aboard... The doors closed on their own, and the steel box began to move. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. There was no going back. Until we settled all this, we couldn't go anywhere. Not sure how long I was, it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. The elevator door slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. <laughs> when I see all of you gathered together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Just the worst. Only because of you. <sighs> Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? Wah -wah? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. <sighs> Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after the commercial break. I'd never hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. And unfortunately, I have to do exactly what he said because I want this trial to be by itself. So. With the investigation done, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying this game, and I hope to see you when we come back for the trial. Later!